Hey, this is Dan Kidder from Sportsman's Warehouse, and today we're coming to you from the top of Brian Head Peak in Brian Head, Utah. We're at 11,307 feet, and we're going to be doing some testing on three backpacking stoves that are available at your local Sportsman's Warehouse to see how well they boil water at altitude, with wind, and cold weather, in extreme environments, and we'll give you the results right here. For each one of these stoves, we used the canister of gas that was created by the manufacturer of the stove and suggested. Before we fired the stove up, we used this jet boil gauge to measure the amount of fuel that was in each tank. Once we got to a boil, we turned the stove off and remeasured so that we could see how much fuel consumption had occurred. 800 milliliters in that one. Each one of the pots had 800 milliliters of water in it. We chose 800 milliliters because that was the maximum that could be put into the Optimus pot and into the jet boil pot. The MSR pot would hold a lot more. At 11,000 plus feet, we had a hard time getting the uh, Optimus and the jet boil to light. The jet boil took about a minute after the MSR had started, so the time that we got was about a minute off between the jet boil and the MSR. minute 39. At a minute 42, we're starting to see the uh, Optimus and the MSR boiling. The jet boil is now just starting to get some steam at a minute 52. It looks like the jet boil is catching up at two minutes with the other two, and it took us uh, almost a minute to get it lit. We're getting bubbles forming at the bottom of the Optimus at two minutes, 13 seconds. And I have a boil on the MSR at 238. Oh, we got boil on the jet boil at 343. We're at a rolling boil on the MSR at 423. And a rolling boil on the jet boil at 429. And the Optimus is just wanting to boil, little pot that could, but I, I, I saw a bubble, but I don't know that that was an actual boil. Oh, we're boiling over on the jet boil, and we're turning off the MSR and the jet boil at five minutes. And the Optimus is sputtering and trying but not happening. It's, it seems like it's staying just right below a boil. And we're at eight minutes, 47 seconds. We are gonna pull the plug at 10 minutes if we can't hit a boil at 10 minutes. We, we've got plenty of bubbles at the bottom, but we're, none of the bubbles are really breaking free. Occasionally one will, but we're at nine minutes, nine seconds. I'm rooting for it. See, one just popped free, but not, not a rolling boil. Okay, we're at 10 minutes, one second, 14 milliseconds, and we still have not achieved a full boil. So we're calling this 10 minute no boil, all with 800 milliliters of water. After our testing at 11,000 feet, we reweighed each of the canisters. The jet boil came in at 93%, the Optimus came in at 95%, and the MSR was still reading at 100%. So we've gotten some benchmarks at 11,307 feet up here on Brian Head Peak in the wind, in the cold, and kind of got an idea how these perform at some of the most extreme environments. We're gonna take them back down to about 6,000 feet, which is where you're more likely to use them, and see how well they do there. Once we finished our testing at high altitude, we returned back to 5,675 feet. Because of the pressure differential, the jet boil and the MSR were back at 100%, and the Optimus was showing a 98% on the tank. We had a much easier time getting these stoves lit at 5,675 feet. One reason for that is we didn't have any wind because we brought them inside. Now, we did have the doors completely open so that we had plenty of airflow in the room. They're not recommended for use indoors because of carbon monoxide, but we had some really bad weather moving in and we had a lot easier time getting them lit and running inside.
The Optimus was the first one to get bubbles and it started at around 35 seconds. Uh, at 45 seconds, we have bubbles in all three pots and the jet boil is approaching a boiling temperature. We get a full boil on the jet boil at two minutes and 13 seconds. At three minutes and 19 seconds, we've got a soft boil on the Optimus, but a full boil on the MSR. At four minutes and 15 seconds, we've got a rolling boil on the Optimus. After all our tests, the gas in the Optimus was at 87%, the jet boil was at 90% and the MSR still showed 100%, making it by far the most efficient of the stoves. In all, there's a lot of use for a backpacking stove. If you're gonna be doing hiking, even just keeping one in your vehicle, I keep a backpacking stove in my truck all the time. I can pull over in the side of the road, open up a camping meal, uh, make myself a cup of coffee, anywhere I, I need to do that. So they're really useful to have. It just depends on what features you're looking for, if size is important to you, if weight is important to you, uh, that having a lighter is important to you. The features that you're looking for are going to be a big factor in determining which one of these stoves is going to be the best fit for you. So I'm going to go through what I see as some of the pros and some of the cons of each of these stoves. The MSR Windburner Duo Stove is a two-person stove. It's got a 1.8 liter or 7.5 or two quart capacity pot and it has a 7,000 BTU burner. The pros on this, I see it's got a pot sleeve, so you're not gonna burn your hand. I kinda like that it has a freestanding base and a remote fuel hose, so you're not standing the fuel up underneath it. It has really good measuring marks in the pot. It has both standard and metric measuring. It has a radiant heat burner. It's different than the others in that it acts kind of like a, a catalytic converter. It absorbs all that heat into the mesh. Um, I will tell you that from experience with this type of pot, I've used the MSR for a long time, that if you get a few overflows of your pot and water gets into that radiant burner, over time it'll rust and it'll stop working on you. It has a strainer and pour vents in the lid, and the handle has extra thermal protection, so if you fill that thing up, it's got a lot of weight to it, and you're holding onto that handle, it's not going to burn you through there. There's extra protection there. There's fold-out legs on the stove base itself to give it a nice wide platform. Really easy to just set the pot down and mate it with the stove. You don't have to line up any little uh, dents and divots and try to twist it and get it lined up. That's a real plus. The cons on this are there's no igniter. Um, it's a larger and heavier unit, but it is designed for two people. Didn't have any kind of a windscreen, and they can only be used with that MSR wind burner cookware but that does come in a wide variety of different pots and cups, uh, so there are many options out there available for you. The Jetboil Flash is a two cup capacity, and it has a 9,000 BTU burner. Some pros on this, it is small and it's lightweight and it's designed for an individual's use. It does have a built-in piezo lighter, but we couldn't get that to work at 11,000 feet. Piezo lighters are really hit or miss anything above seven to 8,000 feet. Um, it does have a strainer and pour vents in the lid. The pot sleeve is awesome, it works great, and it has a visual heat indicator that changes color um, when it gets hot. It has a really good solid handle on it, and the handle's got a little tab on the top to help you grab and pour it more in a, in a more controlled manner. And then it also comes with a little fold-out fuel canister stabilizer that will take a small and a medium canister of fuel. The cons, um, it was really hard to seat the pot on the burner. You have to line the divots up with the burner itself and the pot and twist it. It can only be used with the Jetboil pot unless you buy an extra pot adapter. There are some extra pot adapters available that will allow you to use that burner with a regular pot or pan. There are also other, a lot of attachments for that Jetboil. There are coffee presses that you can get for that, so you can do French press coffee with it. Uh, there's the pot stand for it. There's uh, just a variety of different things that you can get with the jet boil and they're widely available. The Optimus Crux Weekend HE cook system is a 0.95 liter or four cups or one quart capacity and it had a 12,000 BTU burner which made it the hottest burner of all of the stoves that we tested. The pros on it, it has two pots, one large and one small. So you're not limited to just heating water with it but it's actually a major cook system. It can be used with other pots and pans without an adapter. 
It's gonna, of course, be much more efficient if you use that larger pot on the bottom that has those fins to capture the heat. It also has uh, high temperature silicone handle protectors on those pots. It really folds flat for storage. That stove completely collapses, slides over to the side. All of the little pot rests fold up into it and it goes into a little neoprene bag that will go underneath the can of gas and fits perfectly under there. The pot itself had really good measuring marks. Having those measuring marks are really valuable and you don't have to carry any kind of an extra measuring device with you. It has no built-in igniter, so you have to use a lighter or a match to get it lit. Um, and it does have the smallest capacity of any of the stoves, but with the smaller pot up on top, it does extend the versatility and give you a little more capacity. There is no pot sleeve on it. There's nothing to grab hold of and drink out of the pot. You're gonna burn your hands if you try to do that. Um, and there was no strainer in the lid because it doesn't have a snap-on lid. It has a pot for a lid but it does have a little um, spout, and if you put the uh, smaller pot on top of the larger pot and hold them together, you can pour out of that spout. All told, each one of these stoves did a great job at the 5,700 foot mark. They struggled a little bit at the 11,000 foot mark, but that is really pushing an isobutane stove to its limits. Um, especially when it's cold and there's wind out there. We couldn't get the Optimus to boil. Uh, the MSR performed amazingly at that altitude. Mountain Safety Research is what MSR stands for. And it is a company that thrives in high altitude. The Jet Boil is probably the most popular one that's out there. It's all over the place and there's a lot of attachments for it. Each one of these stoves, depending on your needs and your environment, is gonna serve you really well. You just have to look at how you're gonna use it and what features you really need and want and desire. And any one of these stoves is gonna be a great addition to your kit if you're gonna be out in the back country and you wanna have a hot meal. I'll tell you, there's nothing on a cold, miserable, snowy, rainy day like a nice hot meal fresh out of a bag um, or maybe a piping hot cup of coffee and having that ability to just kind of warm up your insides is gonna give you a lot of uh, more miles under your feet in that bad weather. So check out any one of these stoves. You've got the Weekender Optimus, you've got the MSR wind burner system, um, and you've also got the Jetboil Flash. Check them out at your local Sportsman's Warehouse. Pick one of those up, add them to your kit. You definitely won't be sorry.